maintenance gallop, you know, just regular gallop, backed up past the wire, and nice uh, mile and a half gallop, does everything fine. This horse is doing really, really, really well. Actually, both colts are doing extremely well. How did um, how small have he come out of his breeze last Saturday, which I know you were really impressed with? Yeah, good. You know, we we um, been sitting on him all winter long. I mean, I I really wanted the bluegrass to be a prep race, which it, which obviously it is, but. Um, I think he's spot on for this race, um, you know, week and a half, and it's exciting. Only four lifetime starts. How much more upside is there? A lot. I'm, I, you know, really kind of playing this out where we got two two prep races, and then I think, you know, the Derby and the Preakness are races that I think he's possible of popping right back in because he's um, he's plenty fit and in good order and not over raced. For that matter, um, yeah, we've been we've been real protective of where we ran him and um, when, and um, I think timing's really good to win one or the other. Nice one. Then. He has actually beaten a couple of uh, his competitors in the Derby here in Classic Causeway and Wiper Barrier at Church. How much mm -hmm. confidence does it give you that he's actually got a win at the track and clearly has an affinity for it? Well, it's a home game for us, um, you know, and I like that. You know, we, we base here year round. This horse has spent a lot of time training his entire career right here at Churchill. And, um, you know, it's going to be familiar surroundings. He's uh, one for one here. And let's uh, fingers crossed he stays on beam. Yeah. And he's been in the mix with um, Emmy Center and Zandon and his last couple, who are effectively going to be two of the favorites in the race. So, mm -hmm. really, from a handicapping perspective, he's right in this, right? Well, I, th I think we had an excuse with um, the epicenter race in New Orleans. I think we were a little too far back and gave him a little too much to do. But he made, he made a nice run um, late. And then um, the race at Keeneland was also a really good start. And um, come here, Sonny. Um, and the race at Keeneland was a, another really good start. And uh, I think that Flavian Pratt did a great job uh, timing Zandon's finish. <laughs> this is my assistant trainer over here, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and talk about the local connection with this horse, uh, with your your owners, of course, and also with Corey. Well, the Mackin family, you know, they've been involved in racing here for 40 years. Uh, you know, their dad initially was um, leading everything, and then now Mike and the brothers, and uh, they've got a sister that's involved too. And um, yeah, it's really exciting for them, and it, nothing would thrill me more. If we pull this off, it's going to be. Um, a blast. That's great. Now, I don't know if you like a bet, but are you concerned at all about what Mattress Max is going to do to your price? Nah, I'm not worried about all that. Um, you know, I think uh, what he does to promote the sport's a big deal, and, you know, I, I think he's hedged that bet, so I'm not worried about what Mattress Max is doing at all. I think um, Brooke Smith, also here locally, has got one on Tiz the Bomb. So um, I got a couple of guys that are in our corner, so that'll be interesting. I myself am not worried about the wager. Okay. We're worried about getting the horses there. Very cool. Speaking of Tis the Bomb, um, you know, there didn't seem to be much between him and, and the stable mate during their breeze last weekend. How's he been going since? Uh, that's been pretty much regular. Those two are pretty pretty good match. Um, you know, Tis the Bomb's a horse. So here's a horse that's made a million dollars, and he's done everything right repeatedly. And uh, he's had one, one bad race that he ran in Florida, and I think that they're, they're making him a toss, yeah. which uh, could be a big mistake. This horse is trained fantastic, and I think he'll run better here at Churchill than he did at the Gulfstream Oval. And, um, you know, he's not one to, to leave out, I think, uh, especially if he gets placed well early in the race and gets himself in a position where he's um, maybe taking a little less sand. Jen, I mean, speaking of those that have been tossing him, a lot of them are saying maybe he's more suitable to turf. What's your response to that? Well, I don't think there's any question that, that, that he's a, a good grass horse. Um, this time of year, there really aren't a lot of options. I mean, it's actually um, very, very few options. I mean, we could run him in, in one of the three-year-old stakes opening weekend on the grass, but the, the uh, certainly the prestige of that race doesn't even come close to the Derby. And then um, let's give him a shot in the Derby. He's got his points, and if he doesn't run well, then we'll shift him back to the grass. You've been to the Derby before. Where are your confidence levels heading into the race this year with this duo compared to previous years? Um, way up there. Um, you know, I had Tahana run back in 95. You know, it doesn't seem like 27 years ago, but it was a long time ago. Um, and that horse ran super, but that horse really, we, we were struggling getting that horse to eat as well and these two horses are eating fantastic 
Um, he, that Hortana run had a little this and that going on at the time, a little foot issue. Um, these Colts are both you know, spot on, so probably my best chance yet.